Yeah, so uh, welcome to Alex Watson, our, our Thanks, star speaker. Um, but before we get going with Alex, maybe if you guys want to introduce yourselves, you know, say where you're based and what your interest is in crowdfunding, maybe you have a project uh, that you're thinking of in relation to crowdfunding, in fact, that's probably quite likely. So um, if, if we go around, maybe start with Tricia at the top there. Oh, hi, I'm Tricia Roberts. Um, I work at Alder Hay Children's Hospital. I'm developing a digital app um, that's charity funded at the moment, but we're just looking at other options for um, its continued development, uh, how we continue to develop it and whether crowdfunding is an option um, for getting some finances in. Great, brilliant. Thanks, Thanks Tricia. Uh, Karen, I can, I can see you as well. Do you want to tell us what you're up to in your interest? <laughs> Yeah, I work, well, I work with freelance for lots of different people, but um, I was involved with the Cure Exchange project um, and our bid got through to the last 25, but not the last 15, unfortunately, so we didn't get funded. Um, and that project was around carers and peer support. And we've put in loads of projects about, around carers. And I think um, as a topic, carers are a, a, a group of people that get quite marginalised. So my interest in crowdfunding is around... Um, yeah, it's great to go out to a mass group of people for that for funding, but when it's an unpopular topic, how does that work? Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Karen. Uh, Dan, can I just unmute you and uh, oh, oh, wait a oh, I did it myself. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Dan Doherty. I'm director of transformation at Mid Essex uh, CCG in Essex. Um, my computer's too old to have a camera, unfortunately, so uh, you won't get to see me. But um, I guess interested in crowdfunding across a variety of different domains, particularly for sort of community activation projects. Um, but I've also got a project live on a crowdfunding platform at the moment. Uh, the platform's called Space Hive, and oh, really? the, uh, the project is a, it's called the Malden Up project, but it's an intergenerational project about connecting uh, year six school children to uh, patients in a dementia in a dementia care home um, so we're sort of seeking funding for that and the, the way this one works is it's a sort of joint initiative with our county council where if you raise 40 percent of your f funds yourself then they they, they top up the remaining 60 percent so we're pursuing that actively at the moment and, and what, what how much through that uh, kind of cycle with that project are you are you uh, I, I was just looking just before you, you asked actually so at the minute we've got we put it on for 75 days we've got 63 days left and at the moment we've got 28 backers which is 14 percent of our of our total we've had some positive media coverage on local news and YouTube and things like that but um, but yeah we've had it we had a kind of initial initial flurry of lots of activity but it's kind of trying to maintain the momentum and keep it in the public eye to try and keep the funding going uh -huh. thanks great um I'll, I'll try to unmute victoria i haven't heard from her yet so i'm not quite sure she's to speak to us. victoria are you there hello yep hopefully you can hear me yes you can brilliant so yeah so um i'm I'm based over at Gloucestershire Hospital, so between Gloucester and Cheltenham, uh, working in safety and quality improvement. And we had a bid in for the Q Exchange, which was around funding to develop a toolkit to encourage teams to test new processes before they were implemented. So with particularly looking at making sure that things were to the best extent error, error proofed. So with particular human factors considerations and things like that. So just interested in other ways of really being able to get funding to get that off the ground. Uh -huh. Brilliant. Thanks, Victoria. And um, someone has just joined by phone. I can't see, uh, they don't have their name, but the, the phone ends in whatever it is, 585. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi there. Uh, my name is Jem Amasanalu. I'm the Continuous Improvement Manager at CLCH. I unfortunately don't seem to be able to get the Zoom working. So I can't join the video conference, uh, but I thought I'd dial in and join on the phone at least. Yeah. You know, Alex is a great. And then we've got some And uh, yeah, so, so our, the slides are pretty basic. So you, you're not missing out on on a, on a whole load, and you'll also get the slides later. So. Yeah. So we'll share the slides afterwards. Sorry, could you just say your name, Jim? That's it. Sorry. Yeah, it's Jem. Jem Ramazanolu. 
So I'm, I'm going to put myself on, on mute because I th I'm, a, I'm in an open plan office and it's probably going to be quite distracting for people. So I'll uh, just sh shout if you want anything. Yeah, so actually when, when we, once, uh, once we get going with Alex's presentation, it would be great if you could put your, all put yourselves on mute until we get to the kind of Q&A or unless you have a massive urge to kind of intervene with a question. But um, yeah, so a quick introduction to Alex. Um, Alex, uh, Alex has trained 35 project leaders in crowdfunding in the past, which and successfully raised over £600,000 for crowdfunding campaigns and brought on board 10,000 you know, supporters and customers or fans or whatever we want to call them. Uh, so, he's, he, um, so that was partly at the Royal Society of Arts. He's also worked at Ben & Jerry's and On Purpose and is currently working for a sustainability consultancy called Natural Capital Partners. And I actually used to work uh, with Alex at the RSA, so I gave a bit of kind of social media support for some of those crowdfunding campaigns as well. Anyway, I'll hand over to Alex and we'll be um, sharing screens with his uh, slides. Yeah, yeah go, go for that. And um, whilst, whilst you're doing that, I'll just uh, give a little kind of uh, ex expansion and a flourish on that, if you like. Um, so, yeah, I actually started my... Um, started out you know, working at the Treasury, um, so saw uh, some of the challenges, that, um, particularly in terms of public finances over the, the coming years, um, which really kind of uh, both uh, sort of scared the hell out of me, but also led me to want to uh, work with some of these um, fantastic innovations that were coming up um, that I kind of felt that from my time at the Treasury, I, I didn't feel that we're getting enough kind of support from from central government so that's kind of where, where why i took this job working at the royal society of arts um and yeah as matthew said i worked worked a lot with uh, helping kind of startup projects there um i then went on to do a similar thing but in a very different context for ben and jerry's uh, the ice cream company so they were looking to support the next ben and jerry um to uh, highlight, um, you know, how that they were a company that cared about society, and um, so they they were backing um, social entrepreneurs, which is to say, uh, new ideas that would tackle social problems, but had a kind of business model behind them. Um, and yeah, so so that's kind of uh, my the, my crowdfunding CV, if you like. I've then uh, subsequently gone on to. Um, my current role, which is working for a company, as much as called Natural Capital Partners. So we deliver uh, sustainability programs uh, for a lot of big corporates like M&S, Microsoft, um, et cetera, and, and primarily renewable energy, as well as other kind of carbon reductions, uh, carbon emission reductions. Uh, but I guess one thing that's worth saying there is that, um, you know, if you speak to a crowdfunding platform about crowdfunding, uh, you will get uh, one version of the truth uh, because you know it's their business to get your campaign live on on their platform. Uh, so I'm you know very much independent. Um, I'm you know I'm not looking to get work uh, in crowdfunding at the minute because I've got a pretty busy uh, time of things in my current role. So um, so you know I'd, uh, ask me any question you want and um, yeah, uh, it's great to you know hear about some of these projects going on and. Uh, to, to help out with this. So, so I know a little, Matthew did send me a little bit about some of your projects. Uh, so I, I know a little bit of background there. Um, so I'll just kind of get going. Really, the, what, what I'll run through in probably about 20 minutes uh, are primarily two sections. One is a bit of context about crowdfunding, so defining it, getting you a bit familiar with what it is. And then the second is really how to do it. Uh, and then, you know, I want to leave plenty of time for, for Q&A. All right, so I've covered that. Um, I'll just cover this a little bit. So this here, I'm, I'm showing a graph uh, with some of the campaigns that I've worked on. Um, so most of those uh, raised around uh, between sort of 10 to 20,000 pounds, um, then had a one that and two, well, two that were over a hundred thousand pounds. I think it's fair to say that in when it comes to crowdfunding, people will hear about the success stories, the ones that really absolutely smash their target. Those are the ones that are 
on the front of the you know crowdfunding websites. Those are the ones you'll hear about in the press. You know, there are a lot that that don't make it to that scale. And I think the reason why I wanted to show this slide is to kind of give you a little bit of a flavour of of actually the reality of things um, and you know the average kind of crowdfunding. Um, well, there are many different ways of defining crowdfunding as I've come on to, but um, you know a, a kind of donation or reward campaign, um, which uh, you know is probably what you'll you'll be looking at for yours. Um, the average raise there is around about five thousand, um, so that's kind of helpful to be aware of. Um, I'm glad to say I've only worked on uh, five of my 35 that, that didn't hit their target. Um, so some of those ones, you know, one even got about 800 backers but didn't quite hit, hit its target, so that's a shame. Um, but I'll come on to a bit more about those dynamics, but that's just to show you some of the ones that I've worked on. And I'll, and I'll kind of bring in exactly what they were uh, during the, the rest of it. So first, a bit of context. So um, what is crowdfunding? Crowdfunding is um, if you look at Wikipedia, it's funding uh, a project or venture by raising monetary contributions from a large number of people. Um, generally, people expect two other things. One is that that is raised by an online platform, and then sometimes they, they think um, that you're using a target whereby you would only get the money if you hit your target. Uh, so that we call all or nothing crowdfunding. Um, it was really used um, almost sort of exclusively from the sort of mid 2000s. Most campaigns would have that. And nowadays you can opt for both. Uh, so that is to say you can choose an all or nothing target, which means that uh, like our one that we worked on at the RSA, um, you know, they got 20,000 of their 50,000 pound target and didn't get that 20,000 because they didn't hit their target. Um, uh, or the, the other one is keep it all, where you know you you get every you bank everything, every contribution you get. And I'll come on to a little bit more about the pros and cons of those. Uh, but that's really just a kind of opening definition. So mon money from a large number of people by an online platform. Now here I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. So um, here I'm going to just touch on uh, you know what you get in return for that money. Um, so, so there are campaigns where you don't get anything in return. You you just you know get a thank you note. Uh, we call that donation crowdfunding. Uh, there are campaigns on the other end of the spectrum where you get an equity share uh, in return for the money you put in, and that's known as equity crowdfunding. Um, in effect, that turns you into a, a, a little business angel. Uh, little because you can become a shareholder for as little as uh, 50 pounds, uh, but maybe even lower than that now. Uh, the next type is loan crowdfunding. So that's where the money you put in um, you know, is given on a loan basis. So you're promised a, um, you know, a loan repayment uh, rate. And then um, the one that I've worked on a lot is um, uh, what we call rewards crowdfunding. Uh, that's where you get in return for your financial contribution to a campaign, uh, you get uh, a product in return. Uh, that can range from a lot of things, but um, let's just leave that there for now. So the one thing to say about the product is that this is not a like you going into a shop and buying something. Um, in rewards crowdfunding, um, you are, you know, there's no legal guarantee you'll get um, the product that you uh, signed up for. So I, for example, um, my dad is a, a, a fan of aerial photography and he taught photography his whole life. And so I decided to try and go uh, and uh, get him a drone, one of the latest kind of um, drones and, and that hit its target. Uh, but because of the change in drone regulation, they actually weren't able to deliver their products. Um, you know, that's, you know, I took a, took a hit there. Um, but that's one thing to just flag that, you know, the rewards crowdfunding, even though they're promising products, it's not a kind of sh uh, commercial shopping like uh, retail transaction. 
The final one I'll touch on, which we've seen increasingly recently, is uh, litigation crowdfunding, uh, which is uh, where in return for your contribution, you're helping to fund a legal case. Um, so just to kind of, uh, oh yeah, so my experience has been almost entirely on the rewards crowdfunding. Um, so why are these different types of crowdfunding important? Here's just a little, um, a little way of thinking about that. Um, so, you know, first of all, donation crowdfunding. So that's where you just give your donation. Uh, why is that important? Well, it, it's kind of lowering the barrier for people to, um, to, to give money. You know, it's not that, you know, it makes it very easy for people to contribute. So you could say the significance is that it, it helps everyone become a giver. Um, with the equity crowdfunding, loan crowdfunding, um, there, I think the significance is that everyone can be a catalyst. So everyone can um, put up their money as risk for a growing company and get a share of the rewards. Uh, rewards crowdfunding uh, is interesting because um, it essentially gets rid of the need for an enlightened person with a lot of money to back a new venture. Um, the, in effect, there are no need for, for, for capitalists. Um, uh, because you know you're, you're going to the people who want your um, products so you know if I was to be a shirt designer and I've got a new design for a shirt I the traditional route would be to go to some fashion investor get him to front up my money for my first production run whereas crowdfunding allows me to go to the many different potential customers uh, to get um, a uh, you know financial commitments from all of those uh, people um, the money is held by the platform um, and then uh, once I hit my target, it's given to me and then I've got the money to go and do my production run, but I have to, I, you know, I'm, I've promised them a product. Uh, litigation crowdfunding, that kind of makes everyone a, you know, it turns everyone into a pro bono lawyer. Um, you know, I, what could I have done to, to help the legal challenge uh, to Brexit? Uh, for example, that was, um, you know, li uh, a litigation crowdfunding campaign that um, established the, you know, Parliament need to vote on the uh, final Brexit deal. Um, and th yeah, that, you know, people who contributed to that, you could say t they, they became a, a pro bono lawyer, enabling them to, to help a legal case get happen. So those are, those are some of the reasons, I think a couple of things to draw out of this. One is that um, you know people are excited about crowdfunding because it is changing the way uh, that the world operates. Um, the other is that when people refer to crowdfunding, going back to this slide, they they could mean one of many different things, and that's also worth bearing in mind when you are running a campaign, because some people might think of uh, crowdfunding as, for example, equity. Um, so when you say, oh, no, you're, you're not getting equity, you're getting, uh, you, you know, you're getting this reward or you're, you're not getting anything at all. This is a donation campaign. You know, you need to be aware of that, uh, that they might have a different perception of what crowdfunding is. So in a sense, the, the term crowdfunding doesn't actually, um, you know, define things particularly well. You need to go into this level of detail. So um, again, kind of zooming out, uh, uh, see the context of crowdfunding. Um, why is it important? I think, you know, for, you know, some of these things, for, for some of these reasons. So, you know, it really helps lower the barrier to action. Um, so, you know, it's, as the, the quote would go, it's easy to sit up and take notice. What is difficult is getting up and taking action. I do think crowdfunding lowers the barrier uh, to action. Um, next up, don't make despair convincing, make hope possible. Um, you know, I, I think really crowdfunding has, you know, channeled some people, many, many different passions in, into something, you know, new and creative. So uh, I do, you know, think that these things here are getting, getting at the importance of crowdfunding. On a more kind of granular level and if you like transactional what do you get from a successful campaign you get 
one thing you get you get money the next um, is that you're building your uh, social network so more people will hear about what you are doing um, the next is there's a there's a benefit of transparency you know you have been clear to the people um, who you running who you're running a, a, a project you've been clear to the backers and the fans about what you're going to deliver next up is speed so actually interestingly when Ben and Jerry's were trying to build their first factory they did uh, they got investment from hundreds of people in Vermont, the US state where they were based. And they had to actually go around, plan events in town halls to get people to taste their ice cream and stump up some uh, investment. Um, you know, a crowdfunding campaign via an online platform makes that somewhat quicker. Um, yes, it still might be helpful to run those events, but in terms of processing the checks, in terms of um, you know, you don't need to have those events when people might be sharing it through, you know, email, uh, social media, etc. So the speed at which it helps people to take their ideas and, and get, uh, you know, backing for them is also important. Uh, finally, social impact. So, you know, I've got to believe that um, even when companies, quite commercial companies, are using crowdfunding, essentially they're you know, they're, they're kind of saying, well, actually, I prefer my company to be run or governed or uh, backed by people, you know, by a whole load of people, often the customers, uh, rather than, um, you know, venture capital or private equity um, firms. So I do think that in the long run, those companies will have a better social impact. So you're seeing things like BrewDog, uh, which is a, a, a beer company that's you know, now in kind of every supermarket, at least here in London, uh, they they launched their company via equity crowdfunding. And I do think that um, still kind of helps them maintain some of their uh, better kind of practices when it comes to their supply chain. All right, so covered though in principle why it's important. I'll stop in a second for some questions. Um, but um, just finally, so the here I just, this is a graph that shows the, um, size of crowdfunding in the UK in 2016 um, and I broke it breaks out some of the different types of crowdfunding uh, but let's focus here on rewards based crowdfunding that's where people are offering a kind of maybe a t-shirt maybe a, an event maybe a service in uh, in return for their crowdfunding uh, you know, the money people put in. That was £42 million pounds, uh, in 2016. Um, whilst that was growing pretty quickly year on year, I think around 50%, you know, it still pales in comparison compared to the grant funding out there. Um, so that, that is worth bearing in mind that, you know, this, this should, crowdfunding isn't, you know, where all the money is, um, but, you know, to the, to the contrary, there's, there's a whole lot of money um, out there. All right, so now I'm going to go on to a bit of the mechanics of crowdfunding, but I just want to pause there and really check whether, you know, any burning questions in terms of the concept of crowdfunding or any of the things that I've tried to explain there not making uh, sense. So, yeah, any, any questions? You'll have to unmute yourself if you've got any questions. Anyone? I get. I I've got one. Uh, Dan Over here. Now. I guess it's it's just that. Um, I guess everything that you said there makes perfect sense. And for me, the the interesting thing was then trans transitioning some of that into what are fundamentally sort of community based or or arguably more sort of public sector sided projects because. Yeah you know you hit upon this kind of reaction where you, you're typically not offering a rewards based cloud funding type system it is more of a donation scenario saying you know fund this because it's a great project and it's the right thing to do and i think the difficulty that i've hit upon is then that that kind of trade-off between saying well if it's a great thing to do and in my case and you work for the nhs why isn't the nhs funding it just outright anyway why is it that you're looking to to a kind of a different platform so that, that that's the first thing that's more just an observation rather than a question but then the second thing was whether there you've experienced and i don't really know what the term for this would be but 
where rather than people giving a donation, they give you a kind of a service in kind. So for example, the project that, that we're running, one of the, one of the elements that we were looking for money for was a, to, to, to pay a taxi firm to don to, 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 to get kids to and from a care home on a minibus. Now, obviously if a local taxi firm turns up and says, well, we're not going to give you any money, but we'll provide you a taxi to take the kids to and from the care home every Wednesday. Then they've kind of achieved the same aim as what of giving the money is. So in kind, they've given you the money, but they've actually given you the service. And from a, from a community involvement point of view, people being able to volunteer either a service or their time in order to make a project come to fruition rather than just a, a cash donation. I didn't know if that was a thing or if it could be a thing or, you yeah, know, because yeah. in yeah. some respects that's, that can be really quite helpful, can't it? If somebody says, I can't give you a thousand pounds, but actually I can donate you a minibus or something like that for the sake of argument. No, I think, well, two really good points. I think, um, I'll, I'll come, I mean, Matthew and I talked a little bit about the first point. Um, so I'll come on to that in this second section because we've got a little, you know, a bit of a way of speaking to that. What I will uh, talk about a little bit now is, is on your point about those, um, if you like, non-financial backing. So I, yeah, I, I think crowdfunding and, and this is what I was trying to get at with this kind of social network point. Um, you're not just getting, it's, it's not, this is not just a vehicle for the money. Um, you know, by setting out what you want to do in a kind of clear way um, that, that people can easily kind of pass around and share with someone they think that might be interested, you're actually, you know, really helping uh, unlock a whole, you know, other, Kind of network of people who might be interested and and who can give other things so i think that's a very good point and and there's been plenty of examples uh where you know some of the best things that have come from um you know crowdfunding campaigns are uh you know the people um who hear about them and may, maybe don't put money in um uh, you know, contribute. I, I, I think the one one other thing I'll just cover there. So there are two terms to kind of grapple with. One is crowdsourcing and one is crowdfunding. Um, my, our chief executive at RSA, he, he always used to get very muddled up between the two. Um, you know, crowdfunding is trying to get funding from a crowd. Yes, there might be other benefits. Crowdsourcing is trying to source something which is non-financial from a crowd. So, you know, Wikipedia is crowdsourced because it gets lots of people to contribute to its, its, its encyclopedia. Um, but I think, you know, there, there is certainly a benefit of crowdfunding, which means that you might actually be able to crowdsource a whole heap of other things other than the money. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope that kind of makes sense. Yeah, go for that. One, one little point for me as well. When you're talking about people sort of giving time or some other thing, it's getting a little bit close to the. Uh, there was a there was a big winner of the Q Exchange event recently in Birmingham, which was a time bank. So it might be worth getting in touch with Hisham and John Lodge about that because that's that's the sort of exchanging kind of voluntary efforts and in, in they're still developing it. But it might be worth talking to them about a time bank, which is yeah, of things called local exchange trading systems or a similar kind. Yeah, I think it, I, I, I was quite shocked at almost not appreciating. So, so, so to some extent, you're almost responsible for sort of setting up what your ask is. But then people were able to offer things that actually we hadn't even thought of as potentially being valuable to the project. So, you know, we're doing the project, we're doing it via crowdfunding. But then somebody says to us, well, you know, we can't offer you any money, but we'd happily come in and do some professional filming of your project for you and we'll turn it into a... A professional standard film that you can use to promote your project on social media and you think you know wow that would have cost thousands of pounds we never factored it in as part of our project because it wasn't on our radar as being something that you know we should have been seeking funding for but but then somebody sort of offering you that service for free you suddenly realize wow that's am and I, I don't think i'd twig the difference between crowdsourcing and crowdfunding to be honest until you've just explained it but in some respects i think from from my point of view from the nhs perspective 
using those sort of online platforms to describe the projects, but then promoting them and almost saying we want to crowdsource the kind of, you know, the impetus to make this project happen. And if you're interested in helping make the project happen, be it a cash donation or be it a donation in kind of something that you think could further this project, that's, that's really quite an exciting kind of place to explore because it promotes that kind of community infrastructure and that community togetherness to make something happen. Um, so, yeah, very, you, you know, thanks for the answer as usual. Great. Um, I also see got another joiner, Tom. I just want to check your your. Can you hear us? Okay. And uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I can hear you. I'm not sure if you can hear me. We can. We can. Loud and clear. Okay. I'm a bit late joining because I'm in the middle of a uh, a course which we've just broken up for lunch. Well, glad that you can make it. So yeah, I'll, I'll crack on and um, feel free to jump in with any questions. And we'll be sharing the slides and everything afterwards with the recording, so you can hear that. Great. All right. So now I'm just going to skip through um, how to crowdfund your project. Um, and yeah, Dan, I'm sure you've got some uh, lessons here that, that could be really helpful. So uh, do feel free to uh, chip in if you, if you, you know, something that really illustrates some of these. So um, first of all, my, the first thing I'd recommend doing is kind of get inspired um, by what is out there. I think, you know, unlike a kind of grant funding process where, you know, the successful ones who've got the grant, um, you know, you see a, a nice, uh, you know, maybe something listed on a website about how fantastic uh, the idea is. But with a crowdfunding company, if something is crowdfunded, you can then, you can see, uh, you know, who has backed them. You can see their full pitch. You can see their video. You can see um, often because they would like, to, they want to list who has been covering them. Uh, you can, you know, you can even look at which kind of news publications have actually covered particular projects. Uh, so there's just a heap of stuff to 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 kind of learn and uh, essentially pinch from the uh, previous successful crowdfunding campaign. So I'm just going to show you, uh, you know, this was me um, on the basis of, you know, just what, wanting to throw out a few examples, I just had a little look um, at some campaigns that I've come across um, that you know were in this the kind of health space. Uh, so I you know I went on to uh, this, which is a platform which I'll come on to a little bit later. Um, and you know you can you can explore projects, you know ones that are successful or, um, you know, search health, NHS, um, you know, mental health, what, whatever, children's health. So, so there's, you know, easy way to kind of search through things there. Um, so then, you know, what I did is just pull up a few here. Please move this window. Sorry, Guys, are you going to be seeing that? Can you see the web page that Alex is sharing? Or are you still seeing the slides? Uh, no, I can just see a black screen. Um, maybe we should stop sharing the slides and just go to the web page for a bit. Yeah. 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 Sorry, we'll just get off the slides for a moment and go to the web pages. Yeah. Is it this one? Yeah. Yep, I'll put it up. Okay, can you see something that says explore projects? Yes, it's there now. Fantastic. All right. So yeah, so so here's you know one place you can get exploring things, which is crowdfunder.co.uk. So a couple that you know I came across. So one um, here, this is called Veg Power. It's really about inspiring um, children to eat more veg and and parents you know to to cook them more veg. So just to, to talk through a couple of the real kind of key points from a crowdfunding campaign. So you've got you know, a big title here, nice and snappy, and then a really kind of one line explanation of what it does. A video, generally they shouldn't be over a minute. Um, I uh, kind of want, I'm intrigued to see how long um, that one is. Two and a half, so I would say that's way too long. Um, uh, some, you know, some, some people kind of feel the need to 
to do a longer one. If even if this is just a kind of talking head of maybe you and an, another couple of team members, there's so much more powerful than not having a video there. So really encourage that. Another kind of key part you've got here is the amount that, that they've raised, um, number of supporters, and in how many days. Um, if you were to see a live campaign, there'd be a kind of status bar there. Um, so that, that, those are the kind of fundamentals. And therefore, because these things are at the top, you know, these are the things you really want to concent and concentrate and get right. And yes, there's a kind of written version. They, they put some pictures in as well. Um, but, and, and, you know, don't get too intimidated by the number. You know, this is a, a campaign going for 100,000. I saw many of yours are going for sort of 20 to 30 marks. So, you know, got to be a bit proportionate in the uh, graphical effort. Um, but uh, yeah, so on the left here, you see the kind of written pitch. I'll come on to that a little bit more. But interestingly, on the right here, you can see um, that what rewards they're offering. So obviously, so what they are trying to do is, is get money for, um, you know, a, a kind of outreach campaign. Um, they want to create a poster for an advert and then secure sites for their posters. Okay. Um, how do they offer that as a reward? You know, what rewards could they offer? Well, okay, for one thing, they thought of a T-shirt. Now, that's actually not a particularly original one. And you can see here, only three people have gone for that at £25. Far more powerful and far more relevant to this campaign um, was the, the veg, veggie recipe book. So, you know, epic book of veg power recipes uh, from lo lots of different contributors. Um, 121 people paid £25 for a recipe book. I'm sure they could get a cheaper recipe book, um, but you know they want kind of something as part of their uh, backing this campaign. So, um, you know, I think you can see here. You want to try to pick some rewards that are you know related to the type of thing you're doing. Um, one other one that I came across uh, just quickly. So raising the volume, so this, this was a kind of community center uh, supporting people with chronic pain. Um, so it's a kind of uh, day center. Um, yeah, so, so one, you know, again, kind of difficult to come up with rewards, like transactional rewards. Um, but, you know, they've, they've done things like a launch party. Uh, they've um, had, you know, give, basically sold sessions of osteopathy uh, in the new clinic. You know, 20 people paid 35 pounds for those. So here, those are some examples. So the, those are the key things to, to look out for, really. Um, and I think I'll go into a little bit more detail on some of these elements, but I just wanted to show you the kind of proportion, if you like, of, you know, what things are important for a campaign. Okay, the video is important because it's going to be right up there. Yes, it's great to have a written uh, description of what you do. But also these rewards are pretty damn important. That's why a third of the space, uh, or you know, maybe a little bit less, is that is uh, devoted to those. So um, having shown you a couple of these, and, and I would encourage you to to do a little bit of exploring there. Um, I'll nip back to the PowerPoint. So that's really the first, what I think is the first step. So try to get inspired by from sim uh, by some similar campaigns, ones that maybe are in your area. I've put up a, some, some health ones here, um, uh, but yeah, so um, go, go, you know, ha have a little explore. Next thing is to try to do some of the, the kind of key elements in a campaign. So one is set a target. So how do you set a target? Well, first of all, you need to think about what you need for your venture. So I, you know, I saw in some of the, um, on the listings on uh, the Q, um, platform around about £30,000. You'll also then, for a crowdfunding campaign, need to factor in a couple of different things. So one is, um, you know, the, so platforms generally take a fee. Uh, that is between 5 and 10% for most platforms, so you kind of need to factor that in. Also, uh, really think about those rewards. I haven't put it on the list here, partly because, you know, it's often what you'll need for your venture, you'll be delivering you know, rewards. So if you're creating a kind of physical game, 
you know, one of the rewards would be sending that to people. So you need to factor in all of the kind of shipping uh, and and creation of that. Um, what, what else do you set? You think about when you set your target. Think about what we call a stretch target. So that's if you hit your target, you can then set a new one. Um, and so, and and that's still within the, the say the month or two months that you have for your campaign. And so, in a sense, you know, some people actually, they, you know, they find. So, you know, when asking this question, what do you need for your venture? They think about, you know, the really kind of minimal, minimum thing that they could do. And then, yes, that could go successfully. And then you have time within your campaign to actually go for a, a kind of bigger target. So that's one of the first things, basics to do. Then you think about- Matthew, what we're, Matthew we're starting up again, so I'll have to go. Sorry about that. Okay, bye Tom. Thanks a lot. We'll share the recording. Okay, um, so yeah, next up is rewards. So now, um, you know, Dan, you, you touched on this in terms of uh, donation versus rewards. You know, I would strongly recommend that you think about rewards and don't see them as too transactional um, because, you know, as, excuse me, as we saw from some of those campaigns, you know, people might pay £20 for coming along to the launch party, um, which doesn't have to be, a, you know, a champagne reception. Um, and I think also consider everything you do. So, you know, one of the things that really got crowdfunding its, its kind of fame was, um, you know, in the world of theatre. So people looking to put on plays, um, you know, couldn't get the, the production companies to, to, you know, accept their script. But... They just kind of wanted to raise the money themselves and and sometimes they would actually have the script itself as one of their rewards so you know are there any kind of things that you've used or you know if it's chill a, a kind of project with children um you know are there any you know some artwork or you know things that might be created along the way that could be um part of the rewards and um, generally i'd say pick five to eight of those um, and yeah, try to consider everything that you, you know, you do as part of your project and what might be um, of value to some of the people who you want to back you. Um, so having done those two things, you're really on your way. Um, and, and so then what I would do is try to pick and get approval from a platform. Now, this, this might be way before you're actually looking to, to go live. Um, but one reason it's good to do that quickly as kind of step one is that you, your project is then on their radar. So they might introduce you to other similar projects that have done, you know, a similar kind of campaign in the past. Um, so they will, they will then become, you know, help you, um, just, just quickly in terms of the platform. So do think about these things, what, you know, what publicity they might give you. Um, what their fees are, how usable is the platform, um, and what data do you get? So, um, yeah, you as a pro when you're running your project, you get to see, you know, where the money is coming from in terms of have they come from an email, have they come from Facebook, have they come from Twitter? That can be helpful for you to understand what more publicity you need to do. So th those are some of the things to consider. I've put a little list. Um, so. It, in back, uh, way back here of some of the best crowdfunding platforms. So there are, there, there is, you know, I don't, for one thing, I, I don't think it's worth obsessing about the platform because ultimately, um, you know, in the first instance, the, the platform is not gonna be, you know, it's not gonna get you to 100% of your target. It may well turn you from 100 to 200%, but really you need to do some of that initial legwork, um, getting to kind of 20 as you have done, Dan, um, you know, um, and, and, and up, up through your, uh, towards your target, do that yourself um, and don't rely too much on the, uh, on the platform. But those are some of the best platforms to look at. And then there are kind of specific platforms. So there are platforms for research ideas. There are platforms for um, Spacehive, which you're on, Dan, which is for, projects with a, with a 
particular space uh, or community focus. Um, so th these are things I would encourage you to do as a first step um, because, you know, you can just kind of get a, a very quick draft written up of your campaign, set your target, set your rewards, and then you submit that to the platform. And then you say, okay, how can you help me? What, what can, you know, what other projects can, can help, can I learn from to help do this? Next up, try to make it shareable by finding the comedy, the enemy or pop culture reference. So um, going back to actually one of the examples that I didn't touch on here. So this, who gives a crap? Um, you know, th these guys run a toilet paper company. Um, they, the, the kind of USP of their, you know, unique selling point of their um, toilet paper is that a percentage of the profits go towards sanitation projects in developing countries. So for, you know, that, that's, that's a pretty, you know, it's a really massive uh, societal issue. Difficult to make comedy out of that. Um, what, what he did, um, the CEO did his crowdfunding video. It's pretty low, low budget. Um, he sat there uh, in his suit uh, talking away. And then slowly the, the camera is panning backwards, so more of the uh, more of it comes into view, and you see that he is sat on a toilet in his boxer shorts, um, giving this uh, you know CEO's pitch. So so I would kind of urge you to think how what you're doing, you know, it, how how can you kind of find something in that that make will make people want to share it with their friends. Um, so, and that's, you know, something I believe that, you know, yes, of course, the best kind of marketing and advertising agencies can do this, but, but I do think that, you know, anyone can, can kind of come up with these creative ideas as to how to talk about your projects. So really encourage you to rack your brains and ask others um, for, for this point. And then you use that kind of, you know, reference as, as your kind of starter on the page and you, you then need to talk about other things. I've listed some of them here, which is, you know, why you're doing your project, what you're trying to do, how you're going to deliver it, who's in the team and when's it, when are you kind of trying to get it done by. Um, ideally, you'd, you'd have some graphics or images to explain things and then a video, which should really be, um, you know, the, the kind of a minute and no more and it doesn't need to be a Hollywood production and could be, you know, easily be taken off a, a smartphone and, and just recorded that way. So th those are kind of key things to, to write your crowdfunding page. And next, uh, in order to, to, to run your cam campaign, so you want to build and mobilize your network. So just to, to kind of explain the importance of this a bit. So a lot of people think when they launch a crowdfunding campaign, you know, they hit live on, on their campaign and then that goes out to the world. Uh, the world will see it, the backers will flood it. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Um, partly because there are so many crowdfunding campaigns out there now that, you, you know, you're one of many. So actually, it's really important that you build and mobilize your own network behind your campaign. So. Of course, once your campaign gets a bit of momentum, then the you know it, it will, might get some coverage on the platform because it's one that's growing quickly, it's one that's being backed by a lot of people. But really, that you know is you can't kind of rely on that in the first instance. So here are just some tips um, to really. I'm not going to go through all of these because these are really kind of less specific to crowdfunding. It's more you know, if you like marketing 101, so understand your audience, um, who are you trying to reach, what, what's going to be the message that gets them involved, and then think about the events um, and media, um, you know, who listens to those people. So, for example, that veg project, um, you know, they would want to reach out to some chefs. Um, and, yeah, uh, you know, that, that's a kind of important thing, but I think it's worth yeah, actually. one little point to, to point out that Q, of course, has its Twitter account with almost 10,000 followers and the Health Foundation has whatever it is, 70,000. So you, you've got things like that, that if you wanted support from us, I'm sure we'd be able to you know, send things out to our networks. 
Great. Um, you know, here's a ballpark figure of 15%. So, um, you know, Dan, you mentioned that you've already hit 14. You know, I think um, this kind of ballpark 15, uh, 20% is when, if you are a newcomer uh, to that project, if you don't know Dan, if you don't know, you know, his organization, um, if you're just reading about things in the local paper, um, or you know a local kind of blog or forum or Mumsnet. If you then look at this crowdfunding campaign and you see zero percent, you you're thinking you know what's wrong with the the person running it? You know, or or there must be some a reason why no one else is backing it. So I'd be a fool to put my money in. So it's only when you start to get this kind of fifteen twenty percent um, that you are really, if you like open for business for, for new people who don't know you personally because you've established a little bit of trust you've established those you know those you've got, managed to get a couple of dozen people already so um you know they're they're kind of c convinced there's something in this and and really the, the sooner you can do that the better so you know if you have the time try and get in touch with everyone you know before talk about the campaign you're going to run and then um, so that on the day that you go live, they're kind of ready and they know they've almost put it in their diary that they're going to um, put put a bit of money in. Um, build, test, and learn. So I think this is to say that when you've done these steps, one, two, and three, um, test these materials with people who know, uh, you know, people who you think might be interested, um, and you know, ask what for their feedback. Maybe. You know, have a couple of different one-line titles, um, and then really try to, you know, once you've built a little draft version, test it with people, and then learn and tweak tweak it uh, as a result of that. And I think, you know, this is a kind of principle that has underlied quite a lot of the success of crowdfunding, which is it teaches people to work in these ways of getting something out there quickly that's not perfect, and then they learn from that quicker, um, build something stronger. Uh, last slide, I think. Um, so next up, uh, when you're live, make it your full-time job. And now, you know, this depends on, um, you know, the kind of money you're looking to raise. And as I said, most of my background is, is people, you know, in, in that kind of 20,000 uh, category. So really, you know, for those people, um, it entirely depends on, you know, the rewards and the idea. So it's very difficult to give a, a kind of, how much time does it take to run a campaign? But you know, full time for a month, um, if you're looking to raise twenty thousand pounds, is is not. I wouldn't say that's a uh, a terrible uh, kind of ballpark figure. It, it entirely depends on you know how much you're what you're trying to give people for for their contributions. Um, you know how big your existing network is. Um, but but I do think you know maybe at least a part-time job, um, you know, is, is something that is, is, there's no point in thinking, oh, I'm only going to be able to do this for an hour or two every week. Um, and Dan, I'm sure you, you know, you kind of, kind of might bring in your reflections on this. And uh, here are just some things that you should be looking to do um, in order to, um, yeah, really kind of run that campaign successfully. Um, yeah, a, a key thing there is really to uh, be kind of thanking and encouraging the people who have already backed to share it beyond uh, with others. So now we're going to go into a bit of Q and A. Um, so here, here's just you know some some of the questions that I was sent in advance. So hopefully I've covered the bottom one. I think um, the the top two are, are, are pretty. You know, there's no concrete answer to those, um, but you know, I'm happy to kind of expand on them at length. Um, but but I thought I'd just pause now um, for for any other questions uh, on, on the basis of that. Yeah. So if you if you've got a question, we're, we're getting kind of near 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 time. But if you've got a question, try and make it quite brief and punchy to the point. Anyone? Uh, Karen, Tricia. Victoria. Hi there. I've got a question. That's okay. Um, 
One of the challenges for me, one of the things we're looking to do is to develop a board game to support the uh, rollout of improvement at team level and develop a culture of improvement um, in our teams. And I don't know that there is going to be a significant market for this outside of NHS trusts or other organisations which are looking to achieve a similar thing. Um, I can't see many individuals that would be keen to purchase something like this. It would be more organisations. I'm not sure about any, anyone else, but I'm not sure that NHS trusts are allowed to use crowdfunding platforms. Um, so how would that work? Yeah, so, and I think the, the, that's a good one in terms of when, in, when is crowdfunding appropriate. So, so going back to kind of what I said earlier here, um, so I talked about the, the caveat of these product campaigns. So th these reward campaigns when, for example, you know, you say put 30, 40, 50 pounds and here's your, your board game. Um, you know, that might be the basis of a kind of rewards crowdfunding campaign. Because there is no legal guarantee that you get your product for the money you have put in, it tends to be that businesses do not use rewards crowdfunding. And therefore, if you're a, a business, a B2B product, if you're trying to get businesses to buy your product, then then this th that type of crowdfunding is you know not going to be appropriate. So I would say, yeah, I've yet you know I've yet to see a a, a, a rewards crowdfunding campaign that that tries to sell exclusively to businesses. You know there are cases where if the the reward is you know something that could be a really significant you know, benefit to, to that organization, they're willing to take the punt on it. Um, and they don't have procurement rules that forbid them from taking a punt on it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, so I have seen some rewards where, you know, they, they have, uh, companies have put in uh, money into rewards campaigns, but generally I wouldn't kind of base your base of rewards campaign uh, with the kind of primary target for businesses. Or, you know, businesses, I say business, sorry, I mean, obviously, organization, uh, you know, yeah. So in, in, in NHS's case, um, you know, a, a, an organization, yeah. So yeah, I'm afraid if, if that is, you know, if those are the people who would pay for this, then you know, I don't think rewards crowdfunding will be the any more, any more questions before we wrap up? I'd just say, um, obviously, having just sort of tried crowdfunding, I thought it was a, a really sort of insightful um, talk and, and actually really, really helpful and has made me reflect on a few of the things that we did because so cheekily I've put a link to our crowdfunding page on the group chat so if anyone wants to look at it please do and likewise if any of you guys run in the show are able to you know to tweet it or tweet it to some of those sort of uh, health foundation type things that you can we'd be really grateful because I think two things that have struck me one is the reach that you can get the project so if you can get the project in front of you know get it tweeted by kind of health foundations or king's funds or nesta or so or, or or celebrity type folk as well that sometimes that increases your reach massively i think the second thing that's really struck me based on the conversation that you've had that i hadn't really thought of today is the power of a reward that isn't a kind of product so i initially you know i've i've had some great successes personally on kickstarter and some really terrible failings as well in terms of stuff that i've backed and when i was considering this project i was thinking well we're not we're not we're not selling a project a product so there's nothing for me to reward people with so it isn't reward based but now i think about it you know the idea of uh if you offer more than say 50 pounds or something that you you get to come to the launch evening or you get to come to an exclusive event 
held at the school that tells you about some of the reflections of some of the people. You know, that's the type of thing that between the, the five or six of us involved in the project, we could muster up 10 bottles of Prosecco and some cheese and pineapple or something, you know, and put something on, but to kind of give something that's a little bit exclusive to people that did. And, and if I'm being really honest, I, I didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind at the point that we set this up. So um, you, you have made me think, you know, and I think that concept of bringing people together for some kind of exclusive launch or, or, or kind of involvement actually, again, furthers the aim that I'm looking forward here is that, that fostering of that kind of community spirit and community ownership, because then not only could you get people back in you, but you could get them in a room for a couple of hours talking together and, you know, coming up with more ideas and things. But yeah, really, really helpful. guys. And, and I think another thing to emphasize there is, you know, I'm pretty sure I don't know the Space Hive platform intimately, because none of the campaigns I've run have been on there. But I'm, I'm pretty damn sure they're going to allow you to kind of add, you know, things to your uh, pitch, you know, a new reward, you know, the, the plat platforms are pretty flexible. The only thing they're not flexible on, by the way, is if you offer a reward, people put their money in for it, and then you take that off. You Obviously, you can't then yeah. uh, row back on that. But but I think, and, and, and that does kind of demonstrate the attitude that you've got to go into these campaigns. You know, Dan, I'm sure, you know, when you went live with it, there were probably a long list of things that you wanted to do before, um, you know, but ultimately you've got it out there. Now you're kind of working, you know, you're trying to get that, hit your target and you're learning these new things along the way. You're getting advice from people who put their money in, you you know, getting this contribution from there. And I do think that, you know, getting, starting this process of the kind of, you know, even if you're not live like you are, even if you're kind of got your one, two, three down, um, you're already, you know, getting, you're kind of build, building momentum yourself and refining it along the way. So, yeah, I, I think that's a really good, um, yeah, comment to add in there. Yeah. Um, anyone else with, with a very quick one? We're, we're a minute or two over time, but if, if someone else has got a quick question, Tricia or Karen no, or anything? Very clear. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Tricia. So if there, it doesn't look like there are any more questions. That's not Karen, that's trying to say something, is it? No, none from me, thanks. Okay, well, uh, I'll just thank Alex. That was really, really useful, inspiring, practical. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if any of you do progress or progress further with your uh, projects. And uh, I'll try and share this for, you know, other, other people in the Q community and beyond. Maybe I'll do it as a blog on the Q website or something like that just so um, we can kind of learn from the size of the recording and so on. So uh, thanks everyone, uh, thanks for joining us and um, see you again soon for more Q activities. Thanks and uh, th thanks Dan for showing and best of luck with your campaign Dan, I'll, I'll check it out. Thanks very much, any sharing much appreciated. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll try and, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll track it down and try and do a bit of um, sharing via Q's Twitter account and so on. Lovely, thanks very much guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.